And the three Democrats running for governor held another debate Thursday night. We'll link to that on our website. That's at nynow.org. But staying with the Republicans now, last week we spoke with Andrew Giuliani about his campaign. A few weeks ago we spoke with Harry Wilson and we had Lee Zeldin on in April. This week we sit down with former Westchester County Executive Rob Astorino about his campaign for governor and major concerns for New Yorkers ahead of the primary. Rob, thank you so much for being here again. I appreciate it. Good to be here. I appreciate it. Of course. So it's been a few months since we've talked. I want to see where you are with voters. So you've been on the campaign trail, going around the state. What are people telling you as you talk to them when you sit down with them? Really what I'm hearing everywhere is, oh my God, please help us. It's like crazy right now. It's chaotic. Crime is, is rampant. And it's not just in the cities. It clearly is in the violent crime. But you go to any village or town in, in suburbia or rural New York, auto thefts, drug use, um, all the, the nuisance stuff, burglaries, that counts too. And that means your quality of life is not where it should be. And then of course you throw in, my God, I just maxed out my credit card to fill up my car and I can't afford anything. And that box of cereal that used to be this big for like $2.99 is now this big for $5.99. And it really affects people. And I really think that this is gonna be the revenge of the normal people in November. <laughs> really, I, I just, the average person that I talk to were like, I can't take it anymore. And I, I might leave New York if I can, but right now I'm stuck here, which is horrible, because who wants, I love New York, and most people want to stay here. Yeah. But they feel like they're being chased out, or they're not safe, or the schools are failing them, or they just can't afford it anymore. Those can be corrected, so as I tell people, help is on the way. <laughs> yeah, you know, gasoline prices are crazy. It, it cost with, me $111 to fill up my Chevy Traverse the other day. Yeah, exactly. With my car, I used to fill up around $30. Now it's closer to $40. Yeah, I have a relatively small gas Put it tank. neutral going downhill. I do actually <laughs> now do that. <laughs> but that's a big problem that New Yorkers yeah. are facing in terms of gasoline. But yeah. the, the cost of everything has gone up. As you said, inflation is terrible right now. People are really struggling. So. If you're elected governor, what would you do about that? What steps can we take to get some relief to people who just can't get by right now? Well, I'll do what I did as Westchester County Executive, and that is a very blue county. People gave me no chance of winning in 2009. Here I am, a Republican, like, you can't win Westchester. <laughs> and I went everywhere. I went in every community. And my message was the same. Taxes are out of control. We're losing our quality of life people, and remember the time too, is 08, 09, so we had the collapse right, of the right banking the industry, recession, and similar times where just the economy was not good. And I would have a lot of Democrats come up to me and they'd be like, looking both ways, I'm voting for you. <laughs> and they did. And I won, and I won big, and I, and I won re-election. So we attacked the budget. We wanted accountability. We weren't just going to spend money that wasn't ours just to spend it. So for all eight years, the budget was $1.8 billion. Now, you can't find that kind of fiscal conservatism anywhere in New York. Right, Imagine property taxes go up everywhere. They do, but not in Westchester. Right. We actually cut the property tax, uh, never raised them once, because we controlled spending. And we prioritized. And that has to be done in New York. The budget went from, what, $178 billion to $220 billion in two years? Yeah. You don't think those bills are coming due? Of course they are, because when the federal money goes away, what do you think the state senate and the assembly and the governor are going to say, well, I mean, we can't cut anything, so we need more money. We've had an enormous amount of people leave New York. It's $21 billion, I think it was, in, in capital that left New York last year, the number one state for out-migration. And you can attack the wealthy or people who have some money all you want, but they will go and they have gone. And who gets left with the bag? Holding the bag is the middle class. Okay, and taxes are going to continue to go up. So I think we've got to make it business friendly. And we did that in Westchester. We work with big businesses and small on real nuisance regulations that, you know, kept them from growing or staying. We also cut taxes. And so on the state level, we've got to drop income taxes, I think corporate taxes, and the dreaded estate tax. Mm. You have a farm in New York that you want to pass on to your family member or a son or a daughter or a small business, you're wiped out. You can't afford the taxes. How, how crazy is that? 
So there's a lot of things we can do, a lot of things I'm going to do, and I did it in Westchester, and I had a Democratic county board the entire time, just like most likely I'll have a Democratic legislature. Uh, and by the way, Andrea Stewart-Cousins and I have known each other forever. We served together in the county board in Westchester. And, you know, I think we can sit down as reasonable adults and try to figure things out. If not, I will hold my ground. Uh, but I will, f I will be a force of nature uh, to force the changes that we need in New York because we're, we're on the wrong track, and I think most people know that. You know, if you cut those taxes, it's great for people's pockets, but then you have less revenue to work with for the state budget in March. So. I think the other way. You think, how, how does that work? We need all the revenue. We've got plenty of revenue in this state. It is just, con you know, constantly being wasted, constantly being expanded, and, and we've got to get back to what worked and to the basics and do them well. Um, a government doesn't need to do everything because there's a, a price tag to it and it never ends. It only gets more expensive, which means we keep going in that vicious cycle. How is it that a Florida has half the population, half the debt, half the budget, and people are flocking there and living a fine life with a very large senior population, with good health care, with a good education system? So nobody can tell me that you know other states that have less people less budgets and far less taxes aren't doing well. We're not here in New York. By any stretch of the imagination, we are at the bottom. So for you, that would look like a top-down approach of tightening the state's budget, looking for areas where maybe we're not spending efficiently. Not only that, I want to give relief to the, to the counties and to the villages and the towns where they too are taxing. It's all coming from one pocket or the other. And remember, when I was on a town board or when I was county executive, I had to deal with the Albany mandates all the time. Yeah. Every program, they would change the percentage of who has to give, meaning more from the local taxpayer, and the property taxes would have to go up. Now, we didn't do that in Westchester, but that all is significant, and it, you have to attack the problem. I'll, I did it, and I'll do it. Another top issue on the table right now is guns after the shootings in yeah. Buffalo and Uvalde. As you and I both know, the state has now passed a series of new gun laws. I'm wondering where you are on that package. Is there anything in there that you think you could support? Well, let's start with raising the age to 21. That has already been found to be unconstitutional. The 9th District in uh, out of San Francisco, uh, the federal courts have ruled that that was unconstitutional. So it will likely be unconstitutional here, and they knew that. The, the red flag laws failed here. Not that we can't have them, I, I think we should, but it, it failed in this instance. It failed in Florida. Um, I do think with background checks, we should add mental health. Mm -hmm. If there is someone's file that they were a threat or you know, uh, a real issue with mental health, that should be in there. But there also needs to be a balance because there are unintended consequences. People who do need mental health may not get the services that they require because they don't want to be stigmatized or they don't want their rights taken away. Good luck getting on um, off a list if you're put on it, like the no-fly list. So I think there needs to be a balance and there needs to be due process and an appeal. You know, you, you can't just send the police, take your guns and say that's that. There, there needs to be a process. Um, but I do think we have so many laws and they're being ignored. Gun charges are the first to be dropped and there is a gun crisis on our streets, especially in our cities. The cops go in there, they arrest somebody, a career criminal, and they drop the gun charges right away. How about keeping those gun charges, federally crime, federal crimes too if we can, and put them away? You know, go after the thugs in our cities with the drug crisis, the gang crisis, the repeat offenders. We know where the where the vast majority of gun crimes are, and yet we're defunding and defaming the police and taking away the tools that they have. So we've got to go after the real issues here. This other stuff, a lot of it is, you know, do something. Well, everything we've done that they promised would work hasn't worked. So I, I really want to attack the problem in a different way because what we've been doing has not worked. Do you think that there's an area where we can expand mental health services? I know we were talking Definitely. about the state budget. Is that yeah. an area that you would want to invest more deeply in than yes. it has right now? Yes, and we did it in Westchester. Um, mental health, we, we saw then, and it's gotten worse through the pandemic, especially with our kids, um, depression, anxiety, suicides, drug use, um, 
this has exploded and we are completely ignoring it at our own risk. And anyone with a mental health issue should be able to get help. But in this state, we have done different priorities and we've cut the number of beds, we've cut psychiatric institutions and hospitals, uh, services for mental health. That has got to be readily available. And look, we've had to deal with this in our own family with people who are suffering from mental illness. And to get through the system, and most insurances don't cover it, so now people, especially if you don't have the means, you're, you're gonna go bankrupt or you're just not going to get the help that somebody needs because it's extraordinarily expensive and there, there's just not available resources. Last question for you, you mentioned it before, but you have known Andrea Stewart Cousins, yeah. the Senate Majority Leader for a long time. If you are elected, as you said, you may be working with a Democratic legislature. How do you see your governing style with that? How do you work with them? Same as I did in Westchester, you know, first day I got in there, uh, I said, let's get together. Here's my priorities. Here's what I want on. Uh, I put the stakes in the ground on spending and taxes. I said, it's a really big budget, so let's figure out in there your priorities, my priorities, and how we can, f you know, meet in the middle if we have to. And, um, and we were able to do it. But there were times where we clearly clashed, and, um, and you know, I had to veto. Uh, I, the first two years, they had a supermajority, and I had to do, I think it was 300 vetoes. Oh, wow. But I was going to control spending, come hell or high water. I was not going to raise taxes, no matter what they wanted. And, you know, we, we ended up picking up some seats, but we negotiated. And, um, and to me, my word is really important. So if I say to them, I'm going to agree, agree to this, I expect you to be trustworthy as well. And, and that's how we can move forward. Um, and uh, there's not a lot of that left these days in politics. No, there is not. You're right, but we're out of time. Rob Astorino, a candidate Let's for do governor. It again. <laughs> exactly. Do it again. Thank you so much. Okay, Dan. Thank you.